Right. So Goldie's got a different container with a different amount in it, and you've got these. Okay. So I want you to use the scale to determine how much, how many must be in there. Without opening it up, you put one over there. Okay. So you put more. So that side's heavier. So that must be worth more than what X is worth. What do you say, Goldie? Okay, so for those of you who Colby may have been blocking, uh, is that what you do? Football? You block? No. Ah, you're yeah. lying. You're good. Uh, so, so you put the unknown one here, and then just dropped a bunch of ones on the other side, but it was too heavy, so we started to take them off. And so when this was one X was here by itself, and there were how many here? Three. So we know this must be worth? Three. No, these are ones, and this is the X. Okay? You need a break. You're the distraction. Yeah. You can't look at me this far. Stop being a distraction now. Okay, let's confirm. Let's open it up. Stop being a distraction. Inside. There's only two in here. What? Is it three? Container? The container, yeah, is as heavy as one of these. Okay. So you're correct. I mean, this is worth the weight of three. We can say that x is three. x equals three. Okay, now let's put this back the way it was. You know what it looked like when you had, you, like when the scale was telling you how much one of those x's was worth, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's mess around with the scale a little bit until the scale tells us that. Taking one off of that side, now this side's heavier. Way heavier. So Colby just took one, just took one off of this side and one off the left side, so two, one off the right side and off the left side. And so now they're back to balance, right? They're the same. Both sides are the same. So if they were the same to start with, you took one from the right side and one from the left side, so they must still be the same, right? Okay, do you know what X is? Not yet, right? Let's keep going. Count up the one. To, like, you need this to be by itself, right? Yeah. So we'll take another one off of each side. Now can you tell me how many must be in here? Two. Three. 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 These sides are balanced, right? So whatever is here must be the same as whatever is over here. So six. Six? Yeah. Okay. Tape together. There's five of them there, plus the containers is six. All right. Take a bow. So, do it. This is algebra. Let me recap over here on the computer for you what just happened. So, on this side, what Colby was posed with was. This thing that I didn't know how many of them were in there, along with, along with what? X. Okay. Like That's it. Chip. Oh, three chips. Was it three, Colby? Yes. Five chips. How Five. many chips were over here with the X? Five. No. Two. Three. three. There's two. <laughs> there were two. There were two. One, two of those number ones, right? Mm -hmm. And on this side. Uh, eight. eight. There were eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these number ones. So what did Colby do Luke? Oh, after that? Took um, some away. You took one off of this side, yeah. right? But what happened when you did that? That one was heavier. This got heavier. So we took another one, which made it do what? Equal. Do the same, right? When we took one off of this side that was heavier, but then we took one off 
as well, and so they both came back up to the same level. And then what did you do? Took another one away. Take another one away from the side, but this side got heavier, but you, you had already caught on, you knew that was gonna happen, so just at the same time, you took that one off too. So you have to, you'd have to take off the same amount from both sides so that it doesn't get unbalanced. And then we just read the scale, right? The unknown amount must be six of these things. And it was. We opened it up. There were five inside, but the container also was worth one. So X was six. Okay. Now let's let's put everything back. Now let's use uh, math symbols. Okay. What math symbols can we use to represent this situation? Is there like a special one? <laughs> Not too special. Math symbols like numbers are symbols, and, and plus signs are symbols, and minus signs are symbols. Let's all listen, please. Stop drumming and pounding. Six. <coughs> Let's pretend we don't know that this is six. What 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 could we use? What symbol could we use to represent this thing that we don't? We're pretending that we don't X. know X. Maybe two X. This is two X. Yeah. I only see one X. One X. That's one X. X plus two. Plus, plus two. Two more. Uh, what? Plus eight. Plus eight? No. No. Minus eight. No. 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 Minus. Uh, Two. Two. No. Or yeah, equals. I don't know. Equals. Equals eight. Oh. Equals eight. Okay, that's our starting place. How did you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> x, the the amount that we don't know, plus two more because each one of those represents the number one. It's equal to, right? It's balanced. This is pointing straight down, so it's balanced. It's equal to. We can put a little equal sign right there. Colby, is equal to whatever we have on this side. When both sides are level with each other, this is pointing straight down, both sides must be equal to each other. And then you subtract. Okay. But before that, hold on just a sec. Here's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to shift your, your mentality toward this symbol right here. Now, there's a company somewhere in the world that took all the time, invested all the money to make this thing with the express purpose of helping you change your perspective toward this symbol right here. That's what it's all about. Here is a kind of a, almost a misuse of that symbol, okay? So in years past, you'd, like, you'd see this five plus three, right? And you'd know that you're supposed to add five and three, and you would say equals eight. And so over time, this symbol started to mean I did some math, and I got the answer, right? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. This symbol came to, to mean like, I carried out the thing you wanted me to do, and I did it. I got this. This is the answer, right? That's why a lot of you use the word the answer as just a very broad response to, you know, what does this number mean? Oh, it's the answer, okay? This symbol, well, well, this is a true statement. This symbol doesn't mean I did some math and I got the answer, right? What does the symbol mean? That means five plus Equals equivalent to eight. Five plus three is equivalent to eight. Now I did the math and got eight, but five plus three is equivalent to eight. Okay. Uh, and because people misuse this and kind of misunderstand the simple sign, I see a misuse of it like a lot, a lot, a lot. Like um, they use this to mean like I've just gone to the next step of my problem. And in reality, when you look at it. Nothing in there is equal to anything else in this string of operations that they've done. Okay? Like, there'll be, 
let's say a 5 plus 2 is equal to 8, or sorry, equal to, to 7, because they know that's supposed to be what they do. They're supposed to add 5 and 2. And they know the next part is they're supposed to subtract 3, right, and that gives them 4. And then they're supposed to multiply that by 6, and that gives them 24, okay? You see what this person is doing? Yeah. They know like the steps they're supposed to go through, what they're supposed to do with these numbers. Maybe they were supposed to add 5 and 2, and then subtract 3 from that, and then uh, multiply that by 6, and then get 24. But very little of any of this is true. The only part that's really true is 4 times 6 is equal to 24. But 4 times 6 is not equal to 7 minus 3, and 7 minus 3 is not equal to 5 plus 2. Misusing the symbol, I've gone to the next step of my problem. You see that? All the time. All the time. And it makes me cry every time. Okay. What it means is this side is equivalent to this side. And when, I, when you see that symbol from now on, I just want you to think for a second about how it's like this scale. Okay. It's just like this scale. OK, so now let's do to this equation what we did to the set of scales. How would we get this x to be by itself? What's that? Mm How -hmm. do I get the x to be alone on one side by itself, just like Colby made this be by itself on one side? 8 minus 2. Well, I, I know what x plus 2 is, but I want to know just what x is. So how do I not have plus 2 anymore? Minus 2 and minus I must two at the same time do 8 minus 2. Why do we have to subtract 2 from both sides? Because whatever you on the side equals sine Why though? See, that's the, the most common response that I get because it's been drilled into your head. Whatever you do to one side, do it to the other. But why do you have to do it to both sides? That's what we're doing. The answer is right here. Because, um, you gotta make it equal. You gotta make it equal. Now, you have to, I don't have to make it equal, right? Because I've already was equal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> equal is a good word, but I'm not making it equal, right? It started equal, and by doing the same thing to both sides, what do I do? Let's think about if I didn't do the same thing to both sides. What would happen if I took two from this side and I didn't take two from the other side? One's going to be heavier. Mm -hmm. One's going to be heavier, or in a more broad sense, not equal. Right? Should they be equal? Yes. If they're not equal, then we'll never know what x is, because we want to know what x is equal to. So again, why do we, when we take two from one side, take two from the other side? Make it equal. Make it equal. Balance. I'm just going to pick on you just for that one word, make. Am I making it equal? No, no you're making keeping it. Keeping it equal. It was already equal. I'm just keeping it equal. Okay? Yeah. I know that kind of thing can be annoying, but it's also important. We're keeping it equal. It was equal to start with, and we're going to keep it equal by doing what? Subtracting. Subtracting. Doing the same thing to both sides. What we do to one side, we do to the other, because if we didn't, one side would be, be the bigger. same, one side would be bigger, it would be lighter. <coughs> yes. Because if we didn't, it wouldn't be equal, and we want to keep it equal. Okay. So instead of scales, if I take two tokens from this side, I take two tokens from this side. In the equation, if I subtract two from this side, I need to subtract two from this side. It's the same thing as taking two tokens and two tokens from the left and right side. Okay. Now what's 2 and negative 2? Zero. 0. They cancel each other out. Yeah. Let me show you that. Huh. You asked what those dangly things were for. Let me show you. Side and it's 
tray here. I don't know what it is. Another little thing. There it is. This is not an excuse to talk. You should be paying attention. All right. So let me put those two back on both sides. Now, with the scale, we can just take things away. I think just take it, take it, take it, or, or put it there. With numbers, it's not so easy. I, I can't really take this two, right? It's a, just a squiggle on a paper. I can't take it. You can turn it into zero. You can make the mathematical equivalent of zero. Here's a visualization, visualization of exactly that happening. I will. Now what's going to happen, now notice how this is hooked up. This is this thing hanging here, there's a pivot point there, it's hooked up to this side. So what's going to happen if I put two of them right here? The left side of the beam. Heavier. The left side of what? The beam. The scale. Well, like the scale. The two's going to move. This is going to this is going to come down. No, it's going to go up. Yeah. Is it going to go down or it's going to go up? It's going to go up because there's more weight on the outside of it. So when I put these two here, this side's going to go down. I should pull this side up. Yeah. Okay. So look at that. Okay. That's subtracting two from both sides. Well, it's subtracting two from the left side so far. I've subtracted two because I put it in a tray that has the effect of like taking weight off of this yellow tray. And the yellow trays are the ones that we really pay attention to. If I put two here, what's going to happen? It's going to, it's going to, it's going to balance out. I, by putting two here, I've lifted this up by two. By putting two here, I've lifted this side up by two. So really, I've, I've just, it's still equal. Right? I'm not really taking anything away, but let's look at what we have. We have two that are pushing down on this tray, and two that are pulling up on this tray. Okay? So if there's two that are pushing down and two that are pulling up, then what's the, like the net result of that? And the two are going to fly. Two so two. <coughs> but they're balanced right now. <coughs> yeah. Two are pushing down, and these two are pushing up. And essentially, what's happening? They're taking they're each other out. They're canceling each other out. Like the forces, like the actual gravitational forces, are canceling each other out. Okay. So this pushing down and this pulling up, they cancel each other out. So on this side, this entire left side. We have a total force that's just the same as what's in here, right? Does that make sense? This two that's pulling up on here and the two that are pushing down, they're canceling each other out, so it's essentially like there's just this container sitting there. Right? It'd be the same as if I had just taken the two away. On this side, we have eight pushing down and two pushing up, right? These two are pushing up. And so on this side, we basically have, there's eight pushing down and two pushing up. We have essentially how many on this side? Six. Six. It's like these two and these two are just canceling each other out. If I put them there, they're just, there's six there now. And they're balanced. If I put two in the one that's pushing down and two in the one that's pulling up, there's no change. Right? So these two are canceling each other out. So that's what we see here. We're not so much like taking two away, but we're doing something that cancels out this positive two, and we need to do an equivalent thing on the other side. So we already said it, but what is plus two minus two? Zero. Zero. So we have x plus nothing equals equal to six. Six, because eight minus two is six. Colby did it for us on the scales. We just did it with symbols. Okay. Now the reason we have symbols, algebraic symbols, mathematical symbols, is because to do this, every time I wanted to figure out some unknown quantity, 
would be ridiculous. It would be unreasonable to do it this way uh, every time I want to figure out some unknown amount. Right? So we do this. We set up symbols to accomplish the same task. Right? And algebra is born. Because to do it symbolically is much faster and more economical. So let me give you a few equations. Say x minus 5 equals 10. x plus 3.2 equals 7.9. And x plus 3 fourths equals 5. Six. I want you to figure out what x is worth in each of those. There'll be worth something different in each equation. Because x plays a different part. x is a number that if I subtract 5 from that number, I get 10, right? Now, a bad long-term practice in algebra is to say, oh, that must be 15. Because if I plug 15 in there and subtract 5, I get 10. I can just see it, right? People who don't understand algebra very well might praise you and say, like, how do you do it? How do you just see the answer? Right? You just know a number is supposed to go there, and you just rifle through numbers until you find the right one. Okay? If I give you this equation, you're going to have a hard time just guessing what x is. It turns out for this equation, uh, well, there's only one equation. One is solution, but this equation, there's two different numbers that you can plug in for x that would both work. So you would have to guess both of them. Guessing and checking, time for that has come to a close. Okay? You're going to use algebra. So the idea behind algebra is we're going to do some operations that leave x by itself. So that it's 1 times x, or it's x plus nothing else, or it's x divided by 1, or something like that. So how do we leave x alone using some operations? Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. x equals 15. Here we have a number plus 3.2 is equal to 7.9. Subtract 3.2. Oh, yeah. No, what? 4.7. 4.7. Oh. And one. Hold on. Here we're going to do what? Minus. And then find a common denominator. Find a common denominator between 5, 6, and 3, 4, so find it is? 1, 12. 1, 12. Here's your own word. I have two sisters. Did you hear that? Homework. This is your homework. Why? 2x plus 5 equals 23. 2x plus 5 equals 23. That's it. That's one equation. But do not get in the bad habit of plugging numbers in for x and seeing when it finally works. Do the algebra. Do the same thing to both sides. Okay? Uh, 10 seconds early. Have a good weekend. Thank you.